what God has put in my heart with you guys. So let us pray. Lord, again, we just bless you for the opportunity to meet and look at your word together. For generations, people have opened the words of your holy book and we they've heard you, they've listened to you. They've been encouraged, restored, corrected, guided. And in these times, Lord, as we go through this darkness, We've seen your light. We've seen people coming together. We've seen communities giving money to help other communities. We've seen people opening their hearts uh, in ways that we otherwise would not have. And we just pray, Lord, as we come out, as we go back to normal, that we go to a new normal. Things don't go the way they used to be. We go sensitive to the seniors. We go into a new normal where we're sensitive to people who are from uh, marginalized or people who would be lonely because we've tested what it's like to be social distanced. So Lord, just use this opportunity to transform us so we can continue transforming the world around us. As you open the word with us, Lord, just show us what you want to show us and open our ears to what you want to tell us in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, I want to quickly talk to you on the, on the title, Look Up. Look Up. What we see in this story is is Jesus Christ has come back to life and he's been with his disciples and he's about to go up and uh, he's about to be taken to heaven. And this is a very serious doctrine in the church. The, the accession of Jesus and his second coming is very vital to what happens to us as believers. So what they do is they see him going up and as he's lifted up, they remain there for a few minutes. They remain there longer. They linger around a little bit. And I want to talk to us on looking up and some of the things that cause us to look up, some of the things that cause us to have another minute to sit on it, to, to think on it, to, to think on what's happening and, and what is God expecting of us or how is God's movement among our lives affecting us, especially now that Jesus is going in person to the right hand of the Father. So when we look up, it invites us to not look around. So what happens to the disciples is when Jesus Christ died, everyone at this time was a bit scared, not just a bit, tremendously scared. They were in one place. Even when Jesus came back to life, the ladies went and knocked and said, it's me. You know, he, they were in one place. They were very scared. When Jesus even showed up in person, the, the doors were closed. The, they just showed up and everyone was scared. And Thomas said, I got to touch you, Jesus. There was a huge sense of fear that had surrounded the people of God. And so he comes and they're walking together and the disciples are asking now, are you going to restore the kingdom? Are we going to be okay now? Are we going to a new normal? And, and friends, I don't know about you, but I know about how the situation around COVID has been, even in Kenya now. In Kenya, uh, two days ago, the government just extended the lockdown to 20 more, 21 more days. The previous lockdown was very hard on the country because our economy is different. It cannot sustain uh you know like we don't have government funds so you really rely on being outside and hustling and and and, and now with 21 more days it's going to be tough but we keep praying but what i'm trying to say is there's a sense of fear that has been around what has been happening uh, around us and, and around our world today and when jesus is here my, my 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 message to us is an invitation to look up an invitation to look up a prophet uh the the, the uh, uh, psalmist said I look to the mountains, I look everywhere. Where does my help come from? It comes from the Lord. It comes from the Lord. In the New Testament, Paul says, fix your eyes on him, the author and finish of your faith. We're invited to look up. When everything around us is melting and crumbling, where do we look? We look up. And I'm going to show you what happens when we look up. The enemy knows when you look up, things change, things happen and he's going to try to make sure you don't look up you look around you look at your situation and um yeah our financial situation is getting tougher and tougher our economy is getting tougher and tougher and the enemy will give you statistics will invite you to look at the st statistics will invite you to look at the reality as it is and and it's an invitation to say you know what i'm gonna look up but we just don't look up because we set our eyes to look up we look up because of something that happens within us. So why, why did the disciples stay there? Why did they stay there for a few minutes? We're going to look at that. And I'm going to start by telling us that one of the, the things that stand on the way of us looking up, on the way of us fixing our eyes on him as the truth. Uh, when I was preparing this, God got me thinking of, of the solar system. 
how the sun does not move, but the planets do. The planets do. So when we have night and day in our lives, the problem is not our God has left or moved or shifted. No, the, pro the, the thing is our situation and our lives and us are moving around. And the, the invitation is whether we're in the dark or in the light, are we going to walk with him and trust that he's going to shine the light where we're going? So he's inviting us to look up. The disciples had a love for Jesus. The first thing that made the disciples look up and linger around for a few minutes, gazing up, mesmerized or frightened, it's because they also had a love for Jesus. They had been walking with him and what they've seen in Jesus is he had this, he had done something to them that they would miss him, but also there was a huge sense of love for their Lord that he's going. And it was so tremendous that God actually sent two angels to comfort these guys and say, hey, you don't have to stand around. You can go. You can go because he's going to come back too, the same way you've seen him go. Love can make us linger around. Affection can make us linger around. Passion can make us linger around. And that's what God is saying. What I want you to understand is how much I love you. This, this, the book of Acts of the Apostles, uh, scholars agree, can be called the Acts of the Spirit. Luke is trying to see what is the Spirit doing now that Jesus has gone and he sent the Spirit. What's going to happen? And one of the few things that stand in the way of us looking up um, is a distraction from looking at him. It's a distraction from the love that he has for us or the love that we have for him. Um, the other day, a few weeks ago, I was nursing my baby to sleep. I was putting my baby to sleep. I was nine months old and uh, she was eight, I think, at the time. And um, as I rocked her to sleep, I started thinking. She was peaceful and falling asleep. And I started thinking, man, Lord, I, I really want to believe that you are holding me like I'm holding this baby right now. I just want to believe that with all my heart, like God help me believe you have me like I have this baby right now. Because scripture says he holds us in the palm of his hands. And when I was thinking about this, because I pray a lot sometimes when you rock the baby, it's just quiet. It's just me and her uh, during nap times. And what happened is I stopped doing something that I do with our baby. I stopped singing. <laughs> this The baby number three loves singing. So I have to sing a lullaby and, and uh, uh, I stopped singing because I'm deep into my thoughts. And that happens a lot if I'm praying or thinking about something, then I stop singing. What she does all the time, even today, is she will start making noises. The baby noises in tune, like sing, come on, sing, you know, do what you're supposed to do. And as I was busy telling God, Lord, why? I want to help, help me believe you're holding me. God ministered back to me with, hey, did you see the baby make noises? You are distracted from doing what you're supposed to do, to sing and put her down. Even though I was talking to God, what I did is I stopped doing what I was supposed to do. I left this place. So he reversed that on me. I was trying to be the baby and God is saying, no, I am the baby now and you are getting away from me. And afterwards, I was reading scriptures and I, and I looked at the book of Genesis and seeing, what does that mean to me, Lord? What does that mean to me? And God was saying, the problem is not that you don't believe, Henry. You know I love you. You know you're my child. You know the fire you've come is because of my grace and love. And you're not better than anyone else. It's just because of my grace and love and involvement in your life. The problem is not you don't believe. The problem is you get distracted by other things. You get pulled away from the truth. And that's one way the enemy attacks us. Even in this COVID time, we could find ourselves distracted and not focusing on him and not looking up because we've been tempted and pulled to look around, to look behind, to look over there and over here. That's what the psalmist is saying. I look at the mountains. I don't, I, I don't believe in chariots and horses. It is in the Lord. So, um, uh, and that's what happened. The enemy would, the enemy attacks the people of God by altering the truth by tampering with the truth he does that so I look at the book of genesis and and the serpent comes to adam and eve and the serpent says to adam and eve did god say if you eat from the fruit you will die he tried to touch the truth but that's not where the changes started happening the changes started happening in the next lie which the enemies uses a lot and it works better i call it one percent 99 percent 
where 1% is tampering with the truth, he does that. But where it's most successful and it gets me all the time is in the 99%. You can see that in the temptation of Jesus. The enemy tempted Jesus by tampering with the truth, tampering with the word. But the last temptation was different. The last temptation was distracting. He said, look at the kingdoms of the world. I'm going to give you all of that if you worship me. That was distraction. He gives you another option. Because when you focus on the option, when you focus on the other option, it starts to look good for consumption. When we look at the other options the enemy gives apart from our God, they start looking good for consumption. And that's what happened to Adam and Eve. He said, no, God knows if you eat from the fruit, you will become like him, knowing good and evil. Yes, it was the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, but the lie is you will become like God. Friends, I just want to remind us, I know we walk with God. I know we're in a place where we have a lot of things we're trusting from our Lord. And, um, but I want, I want to just remind us that our peace that we get is not a peace that comes from knowledge and understanding. The Bible calls our peace, the peace of God that surpasses knowledge, the peace of God that surpasses understanding. Because it's not the knowledge of good and evil that makes us like God. It is being created in the image and likeness of God that makes us like God. It's not the fruit that makes us like God. It is being created in the image and likeness of God that makes us like God. And we know, and we know, Genesis 6, uh, sorry, uh, Genesis 1, we know the sixth day in the book of Genesis, the sixth day of creation, he created man after his own image and likeness, and he gave him his very life. So the enemy comes and he tempts Adam and Eve, and all of a sudden it says, Eve saw the fruit was good for consumption. And she took it to Adam, and Adam saw the fruit was good for consumption. But Jesus, in the temptation on the wilderness, he said, no, you shall worship the Lord your God and him alone shall you live for. And so what, are we, what, are, what do we see? The enemy keeps tempting us by pulling us from the truth and giving us options that we can look to. God is inviting us to look up to him who is life. Him alone shall we worship. Him alone shall we adore. Him alone shall we rely on. But that's easier said than done because there are things that keep pulling us. The things that keep pulling us every now and then, fear can drag us around. Um, what we love, Jesus said, uh, where your treasure is, there your heart will be too. So one of the reasons the disciples stood on that ground, looking up where Jesus is gone, is because the one they really loved and adored was leaving them. Except he wasn't. So it comes to the question, they say, Lord, are, we go are you going to restore the kingdom? And Jesus says, it's not for you to know that. You see, the problem is we always want to know. We always want to understand so we can have peace. You always want to know where is your next meal coming from. Then you can have peace. And that peace is good, but it's not as good as the peace that surpasses understanding. And, and, and just this is a word for somebody. I don't know what you're going through, but God is trying to tell you, hey, I am life. I am here and I love you and, I'm, and I, I have everything for you, even when it looks like I don't. So Jesus says, don't worry about what God is trying to do behind the scenes. You will receive power and you will become a witnesses from here to the ends of the world. And, and that, that leads to another thing that keeps us lingering. Another thing that kept the disciples waiting, like I mentioned a little bit earlier, it's fear. They were scared for their lives. They were really scared. And, and what we see is... Um, even after Jesus left, until the Spirit came and took over, there was a lot of fear in, in, in every one of these disciples. There was, there was really great fear of, of their known. That's why they want the kingdom. They want something new to happen. Lord, do something new. Uh, give us something new. And as we, as we leave the epidemic, as we leave the epidemic and go back to normal, if a vaccine is found or we go back to work and the world starts stabilizing, we saw online, uh, it, on the news, Italy is starting to open up shop again. And, and, and as we go back, the temptation is to, you know, to always, we can find peace now that we are leaving the darkness behind us. But if, if we don't leave here changed, our minds renewed, our minds renewed, we might find people who will come to the other side with the same problems they had on the other side too. And that's where we come in as children of God. 
is to 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 build on that and to let to start letting people understand you know what god is involved god wants your life god wants a friendship with you and and as we look at him we start seeing that he's here for us not against us and he, he's going to try to make everything work together for good as 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 much as we can understand and so uh, my encouragement to us today is why do we look up how do you look up what what do you look for when you look up may we look up because of love and adoration and loving him but also we hesitate and flinch every now and then and god knows that that's why god sent these two men in white i would like to think the angels to just encourage these friends hey he's coming back and that's where our hope is the return of Jesus is so vital to our well-being on this earth that just knowing what Paul says, whether in life or in death, we bring glory to God. So friends, as, as we walk through the streets of, of Gilgal, we're just talking and, and our friends have seen so many things. Like yesterday, they went through a house of a lady who had nine kids and she apparently had 11. But two have mysteriously disappeared because of the trouble that she's gone to and these are the very young ones. And what the guy who went there, he went alone and he was terrified. He was texting me. He said, we have to go again with more prayerful people because he felt this thick fear and creepiness to, to this home. And, and that's, that's what I was encouraging them. You know, we cannot change everyone's life permanently. But if we let them meet Jesus, yes, we can offer you a meal. But we want them to meet Jesus because there's so much more to life than living it today and now. And that's where we, 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 we have opportunities to share the word. We have opportunities to, to extend these invitations to our friends. Because, you know, we will flinch. This coronavirus has just shocked us. You know, it's like stepping on the brakes too abrupt. And, and that is what happened to the disciples. Oops, he's gone. What are we going to do now? He's going to come back. Let's get to work. He's going to come back. Let's get to work. Let's get to work of encouraging people. Let's get to work of opening people's eyes to what God is doing around us and what God wants. Friendships, relationships with people, transformation in the lives of people. Let's get back to it. So why do we look up? We look up because we love him and him alone we worship. What do you love so much? That is what you worship. And this has been testing times for stuff like that. And we look up too. Because God knows, we hesitate. We hesitate. Maybe before this epidemic, you are not sharing your go the gospel the way you feel you should. The urgency of sharing the gospel becomes amplified in your hearts. Because how many people have gone to be with the Lord that didn't have a relationship with the Lord? Not to guilt anybody, but it's just a wake-up call in terms of uh, even how we relate with people and how we pray with people and how we pray for people. So I'm just going to share a story here. That is a bit close to my heart and then finish here with this um so a few the, the, yeah so the point is we were flinching we flinch and god is like he will send somebody to encourage us like these two disciples i'm just going to show you a picture of why we flinch sometimes why we hesitate to be bold with the word why peter stood up after the holy spirit came on him in this book of acts as you keep reading i know this is just the beginning of this book but you will find peter standing up and boldly starting to proclaim Jesus as life. He, he proclaimed in so many words. I'm not using enough words. He proclaimed in so many words that people said, what do we do? He says, repent and be baptized in the spirit. So what we see is there's that some reasons why we hesitate. I'm just, I, I'm not saying this as the word of God. This is why people hesitate. But some, some reasons that I've observed why we hesitate is not maybe understanding the value of what people mean to God. So we look up to him because he's the only source of life, because we love him and adore him and worship him and see him like that. But we also look up by looking around. When we look up, we look around. So I know I said we don't look around, we should look up. But we look up by looking around. The more, Let me say it this way. The more we are on our knees, we get our hands dirty. The more we are, our hands are busy, the more we need to be on our knees. So one, one way you know you're, you're on your knees, you're connecting with God and looking up is how much he's also sending you out to do this. How much is also letting you be restless until somebody knows that God loves them. So, but the, the, the more we are on our knees, the more we are working for the kingdom. This is in terms of just sharing this love, sharing this faith. And I want to, I, I, yeah, I want to share this story because it's a bit sensitive. So. He's just looking at the value of what everyone, every individual means to God. 
a few days ago, uh, just during this epidemic, I was in this kitchen and uh, my son was playing on the other side and I could see him. Thank God I, I could see him. And uh, he was playing, having fun, and I didn't know he had put something in his mouth. He had put a, a plastic thing that holds chocolate. I think we had thrown everything out except, I don't know how he got this one. So we just make sure now we can see him every time now. But anyways, he put this thing in his mouth and it goes when he swallows it, when he puts it in his mouth, it, 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 it bends as it goes in and then it popped in his mouth. So it was right here, but it had popped and he couldn't get out and he couldn't breathe. So I see this, I rush, I go get him. And uh, I, I, I call, I'm screaming, I'm calling my wife and we're trying to get this out because I thought maybe something on his throat and I'm trying to get this out. And and we did it. We got it. I I, I kept running towards my wife because, um, yeah, so I panicked. I called her and as, as I'm trying to get this out. So we got it out and he had, you know, spat around. He almost puked. And when I was doing this, my son, my older son was there too. He was screaming with me. But friends, I did not think, ah, it's okay, he can choke. I have two other kids. This one can just choke. I have two other kids. You don't think like that. Each individual child is very important to the parent. Extremely important that you don't think about anything but that specific child who is in trouble. And that's what each individual means to God. That's the urgency with which Jesus left heaven to come and get us. That's urgent that agent and 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 it's so urgent that the book of Luke 15 says he was dead and now he's alive so when we understand what each individual means to the father the father we love because he first loved us what happens is it makes us look up it makes us look up i've heard of i think a quote of a missionary who said i'm too busy now i need extra time on my knees because the busier you get the more you gotta look up looking up in prayer looking up in the word looking up in relationship where god is going to be glorified through us so friends i want to encourage us that as we go to the new normal god is with us he's been with us in the lockdown he's even going to be with us in in ways that we've never experienced before as we keep going, the church, as the church opens, people will start realizing those friendships. Showing up on Sunday at 10 is a miracle. It's, a, it's something to say, thank you, God. We can meet and fellowship. Because social distancing, there are people who experience social distancing at different levels. Way before we went in March, down this hall in, in, in March. Then we'll be sensitive to people. Then we will have a heart to pray, God, pray for migrants, pray for people who are marginalized, pray for people who are in situations that they can't enjoy relationships the way we have. You can have a potluck, you can have, and there are people who can't have that. And God is saying, yeah, look up, look up out of love of him, but also look up. God is going to encourage us. Don't be scared. We have a spirit, not of fear, but of boldness to proclaim this good news. So friends, we do things out of adoration and, 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 and worship and love, but also hesitation and, and, and flinching and, and that fear. But God knows, God knows we were very scared to go to Kenya and, and God has always kept pushing us. Every time I feel like I should be looking for another job, God keeps pushing us. We get one supporter and we feel like we will really go and we see how, what is happening already and we can see God moving. So friends, that's kind of what that I had for you. And I'm going to finish with this now. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to finish with another story, with another story, because there's an angel in that story. So the angel comes and he says, guys, go home, go wait, go do what he said you should do. He's going to come back. And it's just an encouragement for us to know that God is with us, even when things are very tough and hard. And uh, how have I seen that? Um, there's this time we went to share the gospel in Kenya and we would divide two and three, go to homes and you knock homes. This was in an upcountry area where there's actually homes and not rental uh, apartments of one room this is just homes uh, so we go to share the gospel in this place and um it's usually open to share the gospel in in, in kenya but this time it was a bit tough for this neighborhood because it was a heavily catholic church uh, roman catholic church neighborhood so um we 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 were tired it was myself and another young man and another girl a worship leader and we would go to a place and one person will go to one house, another one to another one, and then we meet, we pray, we go to another one. So we came out so discouraged and we sat there and uh, I had come to do rap music in this neighborhood. So I'm like, maybe this sharing was not for this time. We didn't pray enough. God is not with us in this. Let's go back to the center. So we pack up and we go back. And then on our way back, we see one house and one guy, uh, the other guy said, did anyone go in that house? And we said, no, we didn't. 
So we all go together, the three of us. And this is what I think a word for us is after this, let us pray together. Let us fellowship together. I, I love what Pastor Tim is saying. Let's have those churches in, 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 in unison together because there's power in unity. Scripture says, where two or three are gathered, he's among them because that's the spirit of our God and he commands a blessing in unity. So we go in here, three of us, and this home was just a home on the front, but she had other sons who, had, who were married and they had their families in the compound. So when we come to share the gospel, all of a sudden, we have eight, eight, nine people to preach to a small gathering, so which is great. And they were open to hear the gospel, even though they're Roman Catholics. We know they are they're believers, but we, we wanted to really share the love of God and just leave a blessing to that home. But there was one young, young man, a, a, a son in that home that was very rebellious. He had his shut off, he, was, he had a hat on, he was smoking a cigarette. When we say let us pray, most Kenyans would take their hats off, turn off the cigarette. They would just respect, even if you're not a believer. He didn't do that. So as we prayed, we prayed, we said amen. And what we saw this brother do is, we open our eyes. Everyone closed their eyes praying. When we open our eyes, he had turned off his cigarette, his heart was off, and he was weeping tears. And he said to us, you came here, the three of you, and now you're three, I can see you. When you were praying, where is that fourth guy who was in white that was here? And I said, I don't know. We, were, we had all of us had our eyes closed. And, 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 and he saw somebody among us and he wanted to give Jesus his life. And he did. We led that brother to Christ. But what I came out of that story saying, God, uh, should I be a bad guy so I can see the heavenlies, the people in white? I don't know. <laughs> but the, the brother did that. So it's just, it was an encouragement for us to tell the team, God is with us. Let's continue doing this. God is with us. He never leaves us, neither forsake us. He's with us, really. And, and that was just encouraging. As we go to this new normal, God is with you. Com just proclaim the word in, 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 in that confidence. Send a text to somebody. Hey. We are meeting this Sunday. Here's a link in Jesus' name. Just do that for the glory of God, for He's with us. I'm just going to pray. I know I said I was done a long time ago, but now I'm really done. <laughs> Lord, we just bless you again for this church community. Thank you that you're with us, Lord. And uh, even as they send us to Kenya, Lord, I know everything we do back in Kenya, in Gilgil, this church is doing with us. That's what the church is, Lord. And we just thank you for technology. Thank you for, for the uh, opportunities to even send videos and pictures between each other, Lord. And we just pray for huge encouragement to this church community as they meet and love on each other, Lord, that you may show your presence among them in a thick, heavy way, Lord, awakening our hearts to the troubles around us, especially of the lonely, Lord, among us. You say you put the lonely in families, and, and this is a family, Lord. And I pray that you will bring loneliness to this family, that they will be loved on. The sick will get healing and comfort and be prayed upon and be laid hands on and the hungry will be fed. So we just bless you because of what you're already doing and the healing you're already bringing to the world for the glory of your name in Jesus' name. Amen.